So the last question of the week is from Derek Van D. Veld. Yawa question, and it's a little bit of a long one, so I'm going to read it. Um, I might just read it in parts, but it's a really great question. I'll read it in parts, answer it in parts. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've been planning to do the positive pigeon drill with my five-month-old Spinoni. Mm -hmm. After watching your wing on a fishing pole video, I wondered why that was different than the positive pigeon drill, which I haven't done either yet. It might be a little stretch, but you're using visual experience to create a woe training. Like the fishing pole, which seemed to be frowned upon, is it more about the live bird experience? Is it a prey drive drill? Can you do this drill at any point in the dog's life? So that's kind of the part one part of that, that I wanted to go into some explanation and details because that is a great question. And one that not many people have made the correlation and asked about. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, so doing the wing on a string with a fishing pole, which we did a video on, is utilizing the dog's scent pointing ability to induce them to stop, stand there and point. Sight pointing. Yes. Yeah. And we don't want to overdo that. So if you watch that video, we talk about, hey, it's really awesome to get your puppy out to point this thing once or twice, but then throw it away. Don't do it anymore because you don't want to overdo the drill. And that's the problem that gets created is people don't necessarily have access to live birds. And so they think, well, I'm just going to have my puppy point this wing on a string over and over and over. And that Because it's a drill I can do at home. Yeah. In my backyard even. Yeah. Um, and that will be enough to get them prepped and ready to handle live birds and go out and hunt. Well, it can do the opposite where it puts too much emphasis on sight pointing, not enough emphasis on them learning to use their nose. So yes, you can do that drill. We've done it before, obviously. um, And we just don't overdo that drill. Then talking about the positive pigeon drill. Yeah. So the positive pigeon drill also utilizes sight pointing, if you will, and um, can kind of help teach a woe-based behavior. But I think it's something that gets overlooked is, again, that one, but probably doesn't get overdone as often because most people don't have access to pigeons the way that we do. Um, And that kind of forces their hand to say, well, I went and bought eight or 10 pigeons and I'm going to let them all go today. Um, But it also doesn't get overdone. So I'm talking on average with a dog, we're probably doing at most three to four sessions that way. At most. And a lot of them, two sessions, and Mm -hmm. that's all that they need. And the reason that we... Yeah, what we're looking for with that is the dog that starts to understand the game well enough that they're coming back and they're stopping kind of all on their own. They'll start stopping further and further away. Now, that distance will vary based on the prey drive of the individual dog. And that game kind of just becomes a fun introduction with a with the birds and the dog and the handler and you can read a lot about you know if I'm just getting to know this dog what are you who are you playing that game with them they have fun they you kind of build some teamwork because they're coming back to us for the next that's what bird. I was going to say that cooperation which is really really important when you get into the field Yes. And then at the same time, you get to evaluate, like I was saying, prey drive. How, where are we going to be? Dogs that uh, start stopping farther and farther away faster. That's going to be a dog that's going to be more naturally willing to point and willing to stand. The dogs that, of pointing instinct. that run all the way up to you and try and jump for the bird in your hand every single time. Those are going to be the dogs that are going to be probably on the harder edge to keep steady. And, and it even goes hand in hand with how much chase that those puppies have. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the puppies, you know, that are huge pointing instinct, they will, you know, chase the first couple and then they're like, well, I'm just going to point it because there's another one to point. And I don't need to chase this anymore. That's, and that's, a, that's a strong indication of when you to You need to be done. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry. And sometimes you'll get some of these puppies that have that incredible amount of prey drive that they could chase those pigeons all day long every day and they would love it. Mm-hmm. But you also don't need to overdo that with those puppies. Um, but you can see sometimes they will chase and chase and chase and then finally come back to you. Um, so you, you can really evaluate a lot of things with just this simple drill. Um, but again, we're talking two, maybe three sessions. I've seen maybe a few dogs that we've done four with, but it's usually two to three. Yeah. And sometimes we'll do this drill with multiple dogs. If you have a dog that's lacking a little chasing desire, you can throw them in with a dog that Mm -hmm. loves to chase and it can build and boost some confidence. Um, and dogs can learn from each other in these situations and it's a really good drill for two dogs to do. Um, usually not two brand new dogs doing the drill. Usually you'll, you know, 
one dog will do it one day. And then the second day, they're a little more proficient at the drill. And the next dog that's fresh can work with that dog. So you've got a little more experienced puppy with a younger puppy learning to do this drill um, together. And you were asking- And that's because timing's important. So the- as soon as the dog stops in the beginning, you need to let that bird go. And then we can build on the amount of time that they stand there, which kind of helps develop a a woe type behavior without any pressure. And then when you, if you're running two dogs at the same time, your timing won't be right unless you have a dog that's ready for standing longer. And then the new dog that needs that perfect timing. So you're kind of basing off of when the new dog stops and stands there and rewarding them. Just like when we're clicker training. Mm -hmm. So we're using that pigeon as our clicker, if you will, that as soon as that pigeon flies, that's the click. So the woe and standing behavior can end. Mm-hmm. So when you're teaching a puppy to sit, let's say, that click has to be exactly when their butt hits the ground. Well, that also ends the behavior. So if you're trying to you know, build some duration of a sit or build some duration of them standing there a little bit longer, you would hold that click or hold that pigeon just a little bit longer. So you can do that with the dog that has a better understanding and then that new dog like Ethan said, that timing has to be perfect for that we beginning sh- puppy. Yeah. And we showed that firsthand in a video we posted here just this last week about, um, place training with two young puppies at a time. That was thunder and clutch. And I talked specifically about showing that timing aspect of things because thunder was better at it. Clutch was still weren't learning. So we're, um, you know, we're it was essentially like marking his second clutch. session, I think. Yeah. We're essentially marking clutch, not thunder and thunder's getting rewarded marked and rewarded for staying longer because he jumped on immediately sat there and we were getting clutch worked over and then marked clutch. So both dogs got marked for doing the right thing, just got marked for doing slightly different things. Yeah. And then lastly, what I want to mention with this positive pigeon drill, it allows us to start introducing the cue once the behavior is being exhibited consistently of, whoa, just like any other behavior of here, sit, kennel. Um, we don't introduce that cue until the dog actually understands what the behavior is that we're looking for them to do. Um, and then you can start asking for that sit behavior or hear behavior, and then they can comply with the cue. Same with these puppies. Once they understand that cue, whoa, they can comply. Even if you don't necessarily have a bird in your hand, um, you can woe them verbally. Uh, but again, it's not to the point of being reinforced with collar conditioning yet. So if they want to sit or if they want to come to you for that reward, Mm -hmm. they will. If they want to woe, they will. Um, And it gives you a little bit more control, a little bit more handle when you get into the field and you're starting to get them on birds. You can reinforce with a quiet woe and then launch the bird when you're doing your pigeon work and stuff like that. But you haven't formally collar conditioned them to woe at that point. You've just introduced the cue, just like you've introduced the sit cue. And if you ask for it and they are willing to do it because the reward is high enough for them, um, they'll do it. But that's why ultimately, eventually, we will introduce and formally woe train these puppies that have learned that cue. For sure. So the last part of that question um, was just a quick summary of where we're at. I've done bird intro with a pigeon. She is very curious, but not the explosive chase type. Did a few sessions of launcher drill the way you use them in the puppy video. A couple weeks later, I shot the pigeon over her out of the launcher. After multiple great gun intros, she retrieved those pigeons pretty happily to hand. I took the next step to a chucker and that went well too. Recently, I tried a pheasant and that did not go as smoothly, but I made it a happy, good experience. She was tail wagging with the bird in her mouth by the end. Since the experience felt rough, which made me want to maybe roll back a bit, slow it down, maybe do a positive pigeon drill finally. Her prey drive has always seemed a little low or not as developed yet. Will that positive pigeon drill help develop more prey drive? I'm in no hurry, so don't mind taking a few steps back. Wait, 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 wait. This was a Spinoni, right? Five-month-old Spinoni. Okay. So that's what you're dealing with is just an individual breed that's going to be... A little slower to mature, typically. Yeah. And even at maturity, I would say a little bit on the lower drive and desire standpoint. Yeah. They're a little more low-key dog. So On average. On average. So like we talked about at the beginning of this, you know, doing this drill allows you to really evaluate your puppy. So the little bit of lower drive and lack of chase that you're seeing isn't necessarily going to be brought out more um, Mm -hmm. by doing this drill. She may end up deciding to chase less because she realizes she can't catch this bird. There's no retrieve involved. Um, She'd rather just point. I would say more birds in the mouth is going to help with that. With increasing that drive and desire. Without overdoing it. Yeah. I mean. 
and we, um, you know, you didn't give us a ton of information about what didn't necessarily go smoothly with the pheasant. Was it the retrieving aspect of that? It sounded a little bit more like it was, you know, the uncertainty of retrieving the bigger bird or was it necessarily, you know, the pointing of that pheasant? Um, so we need a little more information about that, but it doesn't hurt to try introducing the positive pigeon drill, but ultimately it sounds like your puppy's already pointing well in the field and um, pointing pigeons, chucker, and potentially even your pheasant. So, re, you know, introducing this drill isn't necessary at this point, in my opinion. Nope. I would say nope. Uh, I think that you probably just need to take a little breather. Yep. Um, slow down your bird interactions just a little bit so that they stay exciting. They stay exciting. Yep. And it'll, it'll build with time. Yeah. And if you need more help or want to give us more feedback on what exactly was going on, you know, with a pheasant, or if you want a little more help with drills that you can do later on with your puppy, um, definitely feel free to reach out to us on our online dog training community on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. Um, and we'd be happy to help you there. Well, that's all we have time for this week, folks. If you are watching just this video or you just found this video, um, definitely hit us up on the podcast catchers wherever you listen to podcasts you can listen to the entire audio segment straight through of this if that is your thing if not we will see you well i'm out of uh go-go juice which is just branch chain amino acids because it's uh sober october (laughs) and that sound fun well ethan's getting ready to guide and he's got to be game face on tip top shape running working out carrying a baby around on the old pack uh it was a good warm-up for as much walking and work that we'll do this next month but or i guess the end of this month here just a few weeks thanks everybody for watching though i'm the guy with the pink gun i'm cat the dog trainer and we will see slash uh, allow you to listen to us in the next video and podcast and podcast